The Bet365 are among the richest gambling companies in the UK, with the owners ranking 17th on the Times Rich list last year, making 1.282 billion in a year. But how did they really achieve this? I'll reveal all in this video. It's gonna be a shocker as I share five hidden truths that they don't want you to see, in no particular order. Starting off with number one. Smoke and mirrors to create an unlevel playing field. The average viewer is oblivious that they're being tricked and fooled here. I believe that Brian from J4P said it best when he said that they operate a ban or bankrupt strategy. If you're any good, you get banned, and if you're useless, you get a VIP manager who'll keep you gambling. Bet365 pioneered this approach since formation in 2000. It's mad to think that they started this from a porter cabin on the edge of a car park in Stoke back then. But the really crazy thing is the masses still don't realise how grossly uneven the playing field is today. If you're logged out, you'll likely see delayed information and if you're logged in, you'll get a bespoke experience. If you're scraping information, looking at prices, then you'll see something else or you might even get blocked. In the past, 365 employees have spoken spoken out about the methods that they were using against sharp players, using algorithms and computer science for a total stitcher. They even boast about it in adverts with Ray Winston and the company statements talk about advancing artificial intelligence. A 365 whistleblower said that winners were labelled problem gamblers internally. More on that in just a moment because it gets really interesting. Notice the company statement talks about using AI to identify harm cases, although in practice it appears it's being used on winners at the opposite end of the spectrum, something the UK Gambling Commission CEO said that they won't tolerate, before doing nothing about it and then suggesting consumers hand over even more private information. Bet365 already have a unique risk rating on each customer that defines how much they're allowed to stake, which leads me on to the second point and if you thought that was bad wait until you see the rest of some of these points the second one being advertising one product whilst providing another bet365 restricts winning accounts and people who use promotions to pence their algorithms and technology identify long-term winners in a heartbeat and apply the limits to individual accounts in stealth while they advertise the opportunity to win on Bet365, the maximum deposit limit is £500,000 per month, but only if you're a loser who's sending them piles of money. If you're a winner, you'll be deposited to something like £15. To draw a comparison, it's a bit like a bar owner who advertises happy hour but stops people who want to take advantage on entry, unless they're known drunks who will carry on spending until they have very little left, limiting them folks to 100,000 drinks a month just to be a responsible provider. On the other hand, Bet365 CEO doesn't face such restrictions herself, with 469 million pay packet and a 90 million glass palace being built in the countryside. I don't like to pick on Denise individually here because she's done an amazing job as an entrepreneur and the Coates family were the highest UK taxpayers last year. But there's only one reason for this big win and that's because the company's customers aren't allowed to. That's you and I. When I was state restricted several years back, I submitted a GDPR information request to see what information the company held on me. Aside from information about bets that I'd placed, there was only one note on the account. It read status internet only exchanges sharp. GDPR doesn't make the company tell you what their internal tags mean, so it's a bit of a dead end as to what that means. However, 365 whistleblowers spoke to ABC News a while back who explained that customers are assigned a risk rating depending on many factors, including but not limited to betting late, line value, checking prices, refusing reduced prices, location and sport. When you add in IP address, device tracking and information that you fill out on signing up, it shows just how many data points that they're actually monitoring here. Not to mention the three months of bank transactions that you probably have to send them for affordability. Clearly, when it comes to being smart and playing the game, it's one rule for them and one rule for us. Not particularly fair and open that the Gambling Commission claims to enforce on consumers' behalf. If you're a shrewd player, there's only one solution for you, getting your bets on using a betting exchange or taking your business offshore to the the black market. The next point is particularly worrying for all viewers. The third point being legal and withholding winnings 
to avoid paying out. Now let this serve as a warning if you're looking for a big win using Bet365 because gambler's biggest fear is not getting paid out on the occasion they do win. There are multiple cases online where Bet365 have withheld winnings, claiming terms and conditions have been broken as the reason. To resolve these issues, it's likely you'll have to enter a long and costly legal battle. Some customers have done this in the past, only to find out that Bet365 will ruthlessly use their resources to avoid paying out. Megan McCann is a prime example of this in 2016 when she won £984,000. They claim she was betting with someone else's funds breaking the company's terms and conditions. Three years later the case was dropped by McCann with speculation surrounding an out of court settlement. What actually happened there is unknown. The company acts in a typically corporate way, hardly ever responding to the press. In fact, they don't even have a press office, which is unheard of for a company of that size. So how do they manage to get away with so much of this? Here's your answer. Point number four, indirectly buying silence. Bet365's business model is built on maximizing profits through the previously mentioned points and then paying the most for advertising. It's a nightmare for low margin competitors. They offer the most attractive affiliate deals, which keeps the banners on top of everywhere, all over the internet. They sponsor TV channels and industry news outlets heavily, incentivizing them to smooth over any cracks and promote the brand religiously. Honestly, they have the industry locked down when it comes to advertising. Only outside news sources and mainstream media dare challenge them from time to time many of which turn off the comments and triple check their news articles to avoid legal action, or so I'm told. Again, it's savvy business from 365. Effectively, they're buying silence and customers are paying for it. Yet, the very people that they are exploiting are paying to keep them things going. And as if it couldn't get any worse, the fifth point that I really need to make here, buying losers. They don't just pay for masses of media space, they pay their ideal customers to keep on betting too. Now, all businesses retarget customers and that's fair enough, but to only target and incentivize those who are losing heaps of money whilst banning others is a bit different, especially when it comes to gambling responsibly. I mean, imagine if McDonald's gave freebies to the obese only, there'd be outrage. It gets worse when you consider that Bet365 have been known to check in with existing customers who have voluntarily self-excluded as their call off period comes to an end. Setting a daily deposit limit of say, I don't know, 5,000 pounds just to be safe. Despite all of this, according to the Gambling Commission and Chris Philp, these companies don't know who their problem cases are, which is why they're planning to force consumers to submit even more data to these companies and corporations, leaving them to decide how you can spend your money. What do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. There's some videos here in the end screen.